Lectures are Lukas Kolek and Jakub Gemrod from Charles University in Prague, and they will talk about their their title that was released uh, last year, I guess, yeah, right? And the topic of this game is quite difficult, and and well, you will see. <laughs> so thank you very much. My name is Lukas. I'm one of the game designers of this game, and this is Jakub. He's a lead programmer of this game. Uh, this game, as title suggests, is the adventure game, and basically we wanted to make an experience of the Second World War through the eyes of its survivors. So the idea behind this game is that you are trying to find out what happened to your grandfather uh, during the Nazi occupation of Prague, during the Second World War, and we actually we are actually using the real historical research to kind of uh, cover these, to these topics, which are actually pretty difficult. And the aim of our talk today is to share with you some challenging moments when you are trying to make a game which covers like historical topics or Second World War. And we also want to share with you some educational aspect of this game and its educational heritage. And also to share you some making of some historical materials in this game. So let's proceed to trailer to show you what it is all about. To byla strašná doba tenkrát. Co ty dovolete? Děkou jsem neudělal. Dejte mě pokoj. Odboj, to přece byla vlastenecká povinnost. Pak dědu odvedli a já jsem si nikdy nemyslela, že ho uvidím až po válce. Proč vašeho dědu zatkli, to jsme se vlastně nikdy nedopátrali. Byl to zlej sen. Takže se ani nedivím tvému dědečkovi, že o tom nechce mluvit. So, as you can see, the game is uh, mixing uh, quite uh, a lot of different materials, but the main gameplay lies uh, in dialogues. You're actually visiting different characters, eyewitnesses within the game, uh, in order to uncover uh, bits of the story. Uh, the problem is uh, that it's hard to remember bad times, so uh, in the family people are not usually talking about them. Uh, much, but as your grandfather recently got to the hospital, so you're like reminiscing uh, about about his life, and uh, it came up. Uh, you have learned that he was actually sent into the concentration camps. No, no one knows uh, really why, because he has not been involved in uh, any uh, like serious uh, stuff. He was like living almost standard. If we can say that uh, life uh, in, in the oppressing oppressing regime. Uh, so you uh, take great deal uh, questioning people, and you have to question them carefully in order to gain uh, bits from their memories. So the other aspect is uh, we were actually lucky, and we were able to access. Uh, the archive of Czech television. So when you interact with those eyewitnesses and when they speak about some certain or specific period of time, we actually can include some real historical footage of those times in our game. So it kind of illustrates uh, what actually was happening uh, on the bigger scale, in the bigger historical framework. And during that time when you can see these, uh, this video footage, you actually hear the eyewitnesses saying what what they actually felt and what it was for them and yeah another important part uh, are mini games when you're actually playing uh, the game well uh, then some parts of the memories uh, are done in black and white mini games and those mini games are recreating uh, difficult 
decisions uh, the characters had to make in uh, in the past. For instance, here you are re retreating from a concentration camp, and you know you need to get back to your hometown, to town, uh, to Prague, and uh, it's quite far, so you have to take the railway, but you don't have uh, money. You have probably weird concentration camps close, and it's uh, you need to ask someone to to help you out, and now. Uh, how, who are you going to, uh, to approach? How are you going to uh, ask them uh, about that? Uh, this is what you have to undergo uh, personally. Yes, as you notice, there are two parts of the game. One is uh, from the real historical, uh, from the real video footage when you see the colorful images, the colorful video of the eyewitnesses. And you can also see the black and white footage, uh, which are usually interactive comics or some thematic minigames, as you see in the uh, last, uh, last frame. And the thing is that when you see something which is in black and white, that's the clear distinction between the past and the present. Everything which is black and white in our game, it's actually from the past. And you cannot change the past in our game, so you are kind of uh, awarded, or it's your reward. When you ask a good questions, when you interact well with the eyewitnesses, they let they share with you some of their memories, and those are the black and white black and white sequences. That's why there is the distinction. Uh, another uh, part uh, which are there uh, are real stories, which kind of like can't fit in all the interactive parts, but we have also like uh, memories. Uh, diary uh, written by your grandfather, uh, which is uh, coloring uh, what he was thinking about uh, about that times. Uh, the problem is uh, that the grandfather is uh, in a hospital, so he can't uh, speak for himself. But you can at least uh, read uh, his thoughts and uh, see his uh, perspective. Uh, but you're not really obliged to, to read from all this, but we think it's uh, very well uh, very well written and um, really helps you uh, see uh, what uh, people were thinking or one of, uh, some of them may, uh, may have been thinking about events that have uh, that have been uh, happening. Yeah, because in this game there are many artifacts as this one, like there are things of your grandfather and many historical historical artifacts as well, like not just this one, but for example, I don't know, the tickets to the cinema and things like this. And we were able to use all these materials because we were actually cooperating with the historians from Czech Academy of Sciences. So there is something like one to two years long historical research behind this game. And based on their findings, we were actually creating these artifacts. So. The stories in these games are based on true stories. We kind of uh, concentrated them to make a uh, more, more accessible narrative in this game. But uh, historians in this game were not just consulting the content, they were also creating the content. So they kind of uh, created the dialogues, they helped us with the creation of these artifacts, they helped us write them based on their hi real historical materials. And that's kind of a unique in this. Uh, in this process of creation of this game. Okay, so uh, let's get to the design uh, objective. So, so first, how uh, one approach creating uh, authentic representation of the past? What does it mean to have authentic uh, representation? Or how do we view the subject? Uh, then, uh, we would like to talk more about uh, presenting different uh, different perspective because we think that's where the game shines. And uh, the second point. Um, Kind of implies the the third uh, because people are sometimes telling sometimes telling you uh, contradictory stuff and uh, you have to uh, like decide for yourself or find your own uh, in, uh, interpretation uh, of the of the history so you have to approach uh, the information uh, critically. So uh, let's talk about the first point: the authentic representation. Um, because today you can see more and more games uh, telling you that they are based on true stories or inspired by real historical events and things like that. And they usually 
or the mainstream games usually looks like this. You've got some huge historical narrative on the background, like some framework like the Second World War, and you are one soldier filling the objective, like right now, to uh, do probably some mission, kill some guys, and get to some objectives and rescue someone. Uh, if you speak about historical authenticity here, yeah, you can see like the guns or all the technical equipment there, that's pretty accurate. It probably looked like this. The same things is for the environment, but the guy who is actually there is fictitious. He is just acting on the bigger framework of uh, history in the background. Like there is Second World War, you know that, but probably this guy did not exist and he's just sharing with you some aspect of the game, like the technical warfare part of the Second World War. We are trying to do something different, but let's proceed to another slide. Yeah, uh, you can take this also from another uh, part, completely different, uh, where you're focusing on the grand scale on things, uh, like in this simulation, the Civilization series, uh, where you can see depiction of like big, uh, big decisions. Uh, it's not uh, completely uh, 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 authentic, but uh, like can happen like in the real world with uh, real nations. Uh, but the rest is fictitious, but there are also a new elements, like for instance, this might be a bit uh, hard, but do we have a laser? Yes, like here you can, for instance, build a burial tomb, and that tells you like uh, on the, for the whole civilization that will arise happiness plus two, faith plus two, and maybe you will become uh, a, a prey for, for barbarians because there is some, some cool wonder to be, uh, to be conquered. But it's pretty much on the high, uh, high level of abstraction, which is quite different from what we, have, we are doing with the authentic authenticity. Yeah, but let's talk about us a little bit more. What we are doing, we are actually sharing with the players the perspective of those who were actually affected by those uh, by those huge historical narratives. Like there are you, the other games can share with you the war, uh, the warfare or the processes behind it, but we are trying to share with you the civilian perspective of the Second World War. We have many characters in our game and. Many of them are from the different origin. You've got some resistance fighters, someone who was of a Jew origin, and uh, many, many other people. And everyone uh, was affected kind of a differently by Second World War. And they had kind of a different feeling about it. And that's what we are trying to share with you through this game. And that's why you can see every character's got its representation in the past. That's the black and white, black and white illustrations. And yeah, that's it. And uh, the important thing is that you can't change uh, change the past. It can be only uh, told. You can try uh, to play play mini games, but you can't change uh, change anything uh, in there. Yeah, like the history in our in our game, it's more like a platform from the questions to be asked. You kind of interact with it, but you cannot change it. Like as for example in the Call of Duty series or the Civilization, you do not create history. You just interact with it. What actually happened. Yeah, okay, and now about the um, multi-perspectivity or the different perspectives of the history. As I've mentioned, we have uh, various characters in this game, like the resistance fighters, many artifacts giving you some impressions, some real historical materials like the journals and things like that. And they are all somehow connected to each other. Like if you ask someone in this game about some event like the assassination of Reinhard Heydrich and its consequences for the people, it will be much different from uh, to hear about it from your grandmother than from someone who was forced to collaborate or someone who was uh, part of the resistance and everyone gives you some small small part of the of his story and the small part of the history and thanks to all these elements you can kind of create your own evaluation of what actually happened like why these people did what they did and what were their motivation to do that actually so it's like the big mix of uh, various represent interpretations of those of those uh, of those events, and it's up to you to evaluate them. Uh, and uh, this was on the correct level, and each character uh, inside uh, has a pretty large 
uh, dialogue tree. This is just one part, like five to ten percent from uh, from one person. So, so you can see it's pretty uh, pretty big. There are uh, different paths. You can definitely get uh, lost and not uncover uh, uncover every, everything. Uh, that's why we're having a mechanic that you can actually restart uh, those uh, those dialogues and you can try a different path. But if you want like to uh, win the game in in one run, which is probably uh, the best gameplay you can get because only at, with this stance uh, you will start thinking about uh, the questioning. Why are you asking the, those questions? What are you trying to, to uncover? Uh, if you don't adopt this stance then obviously it uh, turns uh, into just like clicking things and uh, the game very very soon loses its uh, its meaning because you're not uh, properly listening uh, listening to uh, to people uh, but if you do then uh, it's i would say quite uh, quite smart yeah let's proceed to the first gameplay we've prepared for you uh, you will actually visit your grandmother or grandmother your grandmother in our game and you will kind of try to find out what happened uh, right after the assassination of Reina and Heydrich and uh, what she thinks about your grandfather. So, you start in the present. So I will be your player. So that's actually almost the beginning of the game. Uh, you were told by your family that your grandfather is in the hospital and your grandmother is moving away and you are helping her to pack her stuff. And now you found something interesting, that's the radio, and you ask about it. Yeah, and it's cool. Okay, let's try this. Jo, může si ho nechat. To jsme s dědou poslouchali, než ho odvezlo gestapo. And now she uncovers something from the past. Vidím to, jako by to bylo dneska. Děda hrál na klárinek nějakou písnísku, kterou já jsem neznala. That was actually the introduction, uh, how, uh, what were your grandparents doing during the assassination of Reinhard Heydrich. Uh, I hope you've noticed the guy who entered the room, or tried to enter the room, that was the former neighbor of your grandparents, Mr. Malek. We will talk about him a little bit more in this gameplay. And you can see that he was, let's say, not so brave or not so willing to be anyhow showing his resistance to the regime and we will proceed with this thought a little bit more. As you will realize a little bit later, your grandfather had uh, illegal resistance leaflets from some of his friends at home and he had to hide them, hide them somehow right now. That's the first minigame, it actually shows you how to control it, everything. So we worked in this min on this minigame with the historians as well. 
and we actually know where you can hide the leaflets uh, at least to have some chance not to be discovered. Like if you put them in the wardrobe, it's pretty obvious that if you've got some control from the guest up or the secret police, they will probably uh, they will probably find them. You can throw them, for example, from the window, but we also know from our historians that it was not so easy because when you have uh, when you were controlled by the guest up, well, usually they were in a little bit bigger numbers, and one was standing next to your windows to see if you are actually throwing something out or not. So that's how we were actually working with those mini games. So you can hide it here. Um, that was one of the places where you can hide it, and there were at least some chance that they were unable to uncover it. Yeah, there is a better option, actually. Pak dědu odvedli a já jsem si nikdy nemyslela, že ho uvidím až po válce. So this is the like opening. Uh, you have your game objective, uh, what to do within uh, within the whole game set. Now uh, there was some neighbor that was ringing the bell and shouting at your grandfather, so we might took interest uh, in him and ask who it was. Těžko říct, nevím, proč by to dělal. Když jsme mu nic neudělali, ale každé nějaké... Mně stačí, když ho potkám na schod. Nebudeme se o něm bavit. OK, right now you can see that your grandmother is not a big fan of her neighbor. And she is not directly, but she's somehow accusing him that he may be the one who... Uh, who were the reason? Who was the reason why your grandfather was arrested? Here you can see some collection of the information you gained. And when we proceed a little bit further, let's ask your neighbor actually what he thinks about the whole situation and what part he actually played in it, according to him. Okay, right now there is a small example, since we are at the beginning of the game, that there are some assertive options to be asked and there are some less assertive options to be asked. Uh, if you start with the first one, you can see that it's not so polite to knock on someone's door and say that because of them or because of him, your grandfather was put in the concentration camp. So if we try this option, you can see that the dialogue is over. But since we are at the beginning of the game, uh, those, uh, those things are pretty obvious. When you proceed a little bit farther, it's a little bit more complicated to be assertive and to gain some information. But we have something or some, some coins which we, since we played the first, uh, first mini game, actually kind of a while, so we can repeat the interview and try it a little bit better. Okay, uh, we'll like fast forward uh, things a bit to really show the link. Uh, so when you will be questioning Josef Malek carefully, you can get to the situation that uh, he will actually uncover some uh, information about uh, about your grandmother. So I hope this is this one. So we are talking uh, with him uh, about an article he was uh, writing uh, for a propaganda article for the newspaper. So yeah, that's the, the second one, right? Byl to hrozný šok. Gestapáci si mě naložili, celou cestu mlčeli a mm, já jsem měl pocit, že jdu na popravu. 
Vůbec jsem nevěděl, kvůli čemu vlastně chtějí mluvit. Na vašeho dědu, na Jindřicha Jelinka. Já jsem vlastně o Jelinkové škole nic nevěděl. I kdybych chtěl, tak jsem jim nemohl říct nic jiného, než že Jelinek byl pošťák a hrál hlasitě na klarinet. Nakonec po několika hodinách o mě ztratili zájem a bez vysvětlení mě pustili domů. Proč se nezeptáte vaší babičky? Proč dědu zatkli? Ona sama se tahala s Němcem a mě bude něco vyčítat. Jestli měl někdo zájem z babice vašeho dědy, tak to byl ten Němec. To byste se divil, čeho lepšího byli lidi schopni. A co všechno jim prošlo. A já byl po válce pro všechny jak prašivej. Jako kdybych to dělal rád. Jako kdybych měl na vybranou. Okay, we maybe forgot uh, with the small backstory. This guy was actually forced or willing to write for the pro-regime propaganda paper uh, during the Nazi occupation. So that's why he's still saying that uh, he was considered to be loose or something like that after the war. But the main information that you gain right now is that he refuses that he kind of accused or that he was the reason why your grandfather was arrested. And he uncovered another liar of the story where he's speaking about some German uh, who were visiting your grand grandmother and now it would be pretty natural to go back to your grandmother and ask her about it but we have not enough time to do that and yeah if you do that you would actually find something different and why why she did that and that's why i want to proceed to our third and the final goal it was to develop a critical understanding of the game because everyone is giving you a um, a little bit different information and their focus is on the different things and their things are actually pretty subjective what they are telling you so you must actually decide what's right and you must create your own narrative of the game so you must be pretty critical about all the information you are gaining and that's why you are kind of a developing a critical understanding of the past and uh, that's the educational heritage uh, of our uh, project uh, originally uh, we received a grant to create an interactive uh, learning material for high schools so about uh, about World War II times. Uh, this was the original project called Czechoslovakia 3889 and from that time we got a lot of materials from which we built the game. And uh, since we were asked to talk about also uh, this background, so we prepared a bit of surprise because um, the game or scenes or materials are not uh, the only things which were created in the scope of this educational uh, original uh, project, uh, but we have created a lot of materi materials for teachers how to actually uh, work uh, with, the, uh, with the game. And uh, this means that uh, we had something we called model lessons, uh, which were evaluated uh, uh, on high schools to fit into 45 minutes of times and each model lesson is targeting some learning uh, learning objectives. Unfortunately, we don't have uh, enough time, but we would like to like uh, not replicate the model lesson <laughs> because that would be too, too much, uh, but to at least uh, let you see how that worked. Uh, yeah, the thing is, I oh sorry, since I was distributing, I wasn't so much listening uh, what Kuba was saying, but the idea is that when this game or the version or modification of this game was used at schools, uh, usually the playing of the game is just a small part of the lesson. You are actually interacting with many materials, some examples we give you right now, and they are forcing you actually to say objectively what happened or at least what someone is telling you what happened. In this case, it was Mr. Malek. That was the neighbor you've seen. And since you are also interacting with many more materials like the diaries, uh, your grandmother, then you can actually, in another column, decide what you think what happened. So these materials, and there are much more, and asking about the various questions, are making you to think about the history. So those are the materials which are actually 
connected to the ga to the game and it was used at the school. So let's get to, to the second gameplay. We will return to Mr. Malek and we'll, this time we'll actually get to, to question him and uh, see what he can tell us about his path past. Yeah, we gave you the materials just to think about what would you actually answer or not to, to these questions and if you would be even able to answer them. Let's continue first and Chamalek. Okay, continue. And when you pay the coin, you can play him again. Oh yeah, so I should have not going through it. So I will uh, skip through the things we have already seen. So let's continue. Okay. So this is the example of the other minigame. Uh, we were, it was actually not our intention to show you this one, but never mind. This one is really good. And it's kind of a give you the impression uh, his task as a journalist was to write, a, let's say, article uh, on behalf or rep or inspired by the Haga speech after the assassination of Reinhard Heydrich. And his task, or in his mind, the task was like, yeah, it must be kind of a pro-regime, but not too much. So right now, you are in the role of someone who actually uh, write, were writing for the, uh, for the paper, pro-regime paper. He was a little bit, oh, not little bit, he was collaborating with the regime, and you must decide what was too much and what was not. So you can actually uh, check uh, the speech by Emil Hacha. And right now, if you write the article... Uh, you have to try to write it as if you were the journalist. Yeah, actually, you can always see the several pieces on the right. And they are more or less... Uh, uh, they are more or less taken from the uh, resistance papers or collaboration papers or something in the middle. And your task here is to find something in the middle and to think about it, what was for regime, what was against regime, and that was the task. Okay, I'm randomly throwing stuff in there. And when you finish with this game, it actually gives you the evaluation. Uh, let's check it out. Yeah, in one of the parts, we actually said that the Hydric was a monster, so that would actually meant uh, that he would be probably fired and probably prisoned for this. So you you were unable to do that. Uh, that would be some evaluation of the thing, but now we can actually proceed to the story. Right now you are seeing the part when I guess he was taken by the Gestapo. And it was during the night he was writing the paper. So now it's the morning. And now you can actually ask a little bit more about the article. What he thought about it, if he considered it to be a collaboration or not. So let's start with the first one. Vy jste ty třetí chytří jak rádio. To se přece dalo říct o většině lidí, kteří tenkrát měli jen tu smůlu, že byli produktivně v věku. Co třeba kantoři, kteří museli využívat ty německé žvásty, nebo policajti, kteří honili nepřátelé říše. Všechny noviny tenkrát psali stejně a varovali před nedozírnými následky a vybízeli ke spolupráci a udávání. Nikdy jsem někoho nepoškodil, ale jak vidím, nemá cenu se s vámi o tom bavit. Naschledanou. 
So we are not careful enough again. He throws us out. Uh, you can imagine that if you visit someone from the resistance in this game and ask the similar questions, the responses would be much, much different. Uh, but actually, already uh, I've heard what uh, Malik thinks about his uh, actions. And so now within the class, uh, the it would continue probably with the discussion. Whether do you think that Mr. Malek should be seen as a collaborator because he was then prosecuted after the war as being such he was uh, forbidden to continue with his uh, journalist work. So who thinks here that he is a collaborator? Okay, just raise your hands. No one. One. Okay. And harder question. Let's try to push this more for forward. Uh, if you were Mr. Malek at that time, would you continue doing, like, uh, remain in newspapers, writing propaganda stuff, or will you fight back by saying, I won't be writing this bullshit and thus endanger your lives? So, who would, like, stand your, stand their grounds? One, two. Yeah, so. I think as you can see, it might be like hard, hard decision, hard decision to uh, to make, and uh, this um, is the way how it is used uh, in uh, in classroom today, even. So. So that was about the educational part and how it is used actually in schools. So you can see that uh, they actually in the class they see some parts of the dialogues, some parts of the comics, and then the discussion is actually about those parts. How, how would they behave? What do they think about it? And etc. But right now I would like to speak a little bit about the making of historical comics, since we are at Fest Ancha, and here. It's the same as in our design principles. We really wanted to create an authentic representation of the past, even in our comics, since they are from the past. So how you can create an authentic historical comics when you work with the historians and artists? So this is like the, we would like to, in this part, we would like to give you some impression how we create some small parts of the whole comics and what's the whole, pro what's the whole process. And in the end, we will show you the uh, the actual outcome of the comics. So let's start with the first three frames. So uh, you can see that they share in common uh, the uh, the environment, and that is uh, nothing. Uh, that's not something that an artist like uh, come up on its uh, on its own, uh, as it started uh, as going to the real place, as it can be seen uh, today, and uh, taking taking the picture. Uh, then we can see that there are some like problematic things that can't really be there, uh, couldn't be there uh, during World War II, uh, like the car or uh, the name of the station, Praha Vršovice. So this has to be taken, uh, taken out. Uh, then uh, the artist uh, will select uh, the final portion of, of the image where uh, the events will take uh, take place. Uh, then at this at this stage, let's say, uh, it will submit to uh, historians uh, who actually uh, hinted on what should be added or further furthermore like removed from the uh, from the scene. And at this time, it uh, might boil down to putting here the sign. Uh, which was at that time, and they knew it was exactly there, having exactly uh, this um, this visual style, like the German name and the uh, uh, and the Czech name. And then this can uh, have been used uh, for uh, embedding some uh, some story uh, story elements in there. So uh, more people were uh, drawn in there uh, again. Artists were going into the age, seeing how people uh, dressed up, and then we have uh, the Hitlerjungen uh, march through the city, 
uh, pictured in uh, in one frame, and then uh, our grandfather uh, greeting his uh, his friend uh, of the past. And that's uh, pretty much the effort that went into uh, creating the three uh, frames, and uh, for the rest was like similar. Like for instance. Yeah, let's check the train. Like you can see that when we create environment in our game, we put actually a lot of effort and a lot of research from our historians into that. So let's check the train. And our artists also put a lot of effort to find something like the train, which could be actually used during the Second World War and which is in a good shape to be used. So we found this one and we made the same process. We found the interiors, we make the photos of them and we created the scenes and then our illustrators uh, thought a little bit more how it could be actually used in the comics. Uh, we have some narrative designers and now we will show you the outcome. That's the actual comics from one of the people there. That's the friend of your grandfather. Uh, that's actually the one of a Jew origin, so he will have some problems during those times. And we want to show you right now. This is actually your grandfather on the left, saying hello, and this is his friend. This comic is going to be a little bit more about him. Actually, this comic is kind of a crucial for the story, but we will cut it somewhere in the half, not to spoil, spoil you the narrative of our game. So right now you will just see the parts when he is trying to find or trying to pick up some food for a grandfather from his relatives uh, not so far away from Prague and he's gonna be caught by the Gestapo police or maybe he's gonna be caught by the Gestapo police If you focus on any interior or anything you see that uh, see there, actually every every frame in this comics uh, had to uh, suffer the same process with the historians, graphics, and illustrators. So it took us a, li a little bit of a time to create this. So uh, that's it uh, from the gameplay. Uh, you have to like play it first if you want to see the the result. Um, so finally, uh, this uh, work is not only ours. Um, we are uh, academics from three institutions: so people from uh, mathematical and physical faculties, faculty of arts, and historians from uh, what's the name contemporary. History Department for the Contemporary History of uh, Czech Academy of uh, Sciences took uh, part in, in creating creating all this. So that's also kind of unique as uh, it is originating uh, from the academia, uh, academia itself. Uh, yeah, we were kind of a successful with this game. Uh, we visited several festivals and we were awarded by several, several awards. Uh, for example, the interesting one is the award from the Amaze Festival, which is uh, based actually in Germany. But our game, we are unable to sell our game in Germany since we've got the Nazi symbolism in our game. 
and the games are not considered to be art in Germany. So it's illegal for us to distribute this game in Germany. So we had to create some uh, some uh, trailer uh, which were centered and based on the backstage experience of the creators we were chosen and we actually won this game but till today we are still unable to distribute our game in Germany. We are still waiting for the approval and the le and uh, proceeding in the le legislation. Yeah, so that's it. That was Argentina 1942. It's already available on Steam. If you liked what you have seen, uh, we're on sale, so don't hes hesitate to snatch it. Thank you. So, thank you. Uh, any questions? Anyone? Come on, guys, don't be shy. Well, uh, I, I've heard a while ago that uh, you've received uh, an award if in New York yesterday, Games for Change. Can you tell us something more about it? Yeah, it's actually, in okay. uh, it's actually the festival. It's actually the festival. We received the award like probably five, six hours ago and it's one of the most famous festivals about the games for change that's the games uh, actually the serious games which are not only meant uh, for the entertainment but they are actually giving you something extra some skills some education some uh, you maybe if you were here during the last session uh, someone told something about the education by accident and those are the games which are not just meant by for uh, for uh, for the enter entertainment and this festival are kind of uh, the place where all these games are concentrating and we actually won there for the best narrative. Yeah, so it's probably not that bad the game. So now questions. So I would like to ask about uh, like the development part, especially about the communication with the old people who you use in the video sequentials. Uh, how hard or what was the most difficult part uh, in like working with them? You say that it's even part of the narrative that they don't uh, really like to talk about st some topics from from the past. And how did you like? make them talk in all the options that you actually need for your gameplay? Uh, yeah, thank you for the question. Uh, we're very sorry uh, we've been misleading you probably because they are not like uh, the true eye eyewitnesses. They are like amateur actors. And uh, so they were, they were acting, uh, acting out. But um, the stories uh, are from uh, one, not company, not is this called in English? An NGO uh, called Postbellum, who uh, are gathering all the stories uh, from, from the Czechoslovakia. So uh, we've picked them up, uh, and then the historians have uh, written the dialogues, which were then uh, shoot it. Uh, have you met with any negative reactions from people who think that uh, you're not representing what they think happened or that you're representing it somehow flatly as people often do who have different ideas about history? Uh, actually, not so much. The problem is usually more uh, with the format that people are saying that it's too heavy for the game and they have actually the problem to show these events in the game. That's usually the controversy. But we actually had some like negative reviews or some negative reactions, but not so much. We were kind of surprised in this. Uh, like we're more criti criticized for this not uh, being being the game than uh, than the content. Usually, the content is regarded as very high high quality, very well well researched. So. But uh, we are currently uh, preparing something like a follow-up uh, from the era between 45 and 48. So it will be about uh, communism taking over and the end of the war, pushing uh, the Germans to the poor. I don't know what the exposure of, of Germans yes. And this will probably be much more controversial. We, uh, we <laughs> expect.
controversies there. Okay, probably the last one. Hi. Uh, can you share some statistics about uh, what kind of players play, play this game? Uh, are there any elderly play ba player base? Uh, it's very different. We know that uh, people from different ages are, are playing that for sure, and uh, but we don't have like any in-depth statistics uh, regarding regarding their background. Uh, but uh, it was interesting for us to learn that it can this format uh, can be enjoyed even by kids starting from to age, age 12. They uh, really like understand the story because it's not really about the, the events or dates, but about things which are happening in the family, so they can somehow already relate to to these things. Okay, then thank you for your time. Thank you for a great talk. Yeah, and thank you for inviting us. We will see you in 10 minutes with another talk.